Now moving ahead, let's talk now about the lowest component in our architecture, disk space management. Recall that most database systems store information on disks and SSDs. Disks are a mechanical acronym. They're very, very slow. It's like going to Pluto. And SSDs are faster, but they're still slow relative to memory, and they have costly writes that are more on the order of magnetic disks than RAM. Now, disk drives offer an interface with read and write of a large sequential chunk of bytes called a block. And there's a notion of blocks being sequential on the disk, which is to say that there's a block and then there's the next block and the next block. There's some order of blocks on the disk. And getting the next block is usually cheaper than getting a far away block. All right. One of the things we want to do when we get a block off the disk is maximize its usage. If we're going to pay to do a read or pay to do a write, we want to amortize that cost. We want to make the most of that cost because it's going to include the seek delay on a hard disk drive, the rotational delay as well, and then even with SSDs, the write cost is going to be high. So if it costs you know, comparably to going to Pluto to do a disk I.O., we want to make sure we pack the spaceship full. We don't want to go to Pluto and send just a small thing and then have to go and send another small thing. We want to pack it full of good stuff before we go to Pluto. So we're going to do the same thing here with our reads and writes. We're going to try to make sure that we get a full block worth of goodness out of a read and a full block worth of interesting data written to disk out of a write. Some of the ways we're going to do this is we're going to predict future behavior. So we're going to do things like keep blocks in memory if we think they're going to be popular. We think they're going to be accessed a lot. It's called caching. We might even pre-fetch blocks from the disk because we think they're going to be accessed soon. So we can get ahead of the request for that page, get it from the disk into memory before it's even accessed. That's called pre-fetching. Uh, and then with writes, we can buffer them. So we can hold on. When you say, I'd like to write page four, we might not write it right now. We might hold it in a memory buffer. And then maybe over time, you'll have asked to write page four, five, and six, and we can write them all together at once. So we'll buffer writes until we can get runs of sequential writes. We'll talk about each of these tricks, caching, prefetching, buffering more as we go on through the lectures. But I wanted to give you a sense of what they were up front. So it's a first introduction to these ideas. A note on terminology. What is a block? A block is the unit of transfer uh, with, between a disk and RAM. All right, so a block is what we call the uh, unit of transfer. It's usually something like 64K, and it's configured to be a constant when you uh, set up your database system. So it's usually configured to 64K. Sometimes we might configure it to 128K. Those are reasonable numbers for today's uh, disk drives. The book's a little bit out of date, so the book for this course uh, says 4K. Uh, these days would be more like 64K. Page is a word that we'll use interchangeably with block. Many people treat them as synonyms, and that's what we'll do. Um, in some textbooks, page strictly refers to a block that's in memory right now. So we call, uh, in some, some people are careful to say, if it's a page, that means it's currently in RAM. And when it's on disk, it's a block. Uh, we will just use the word page and block interchangeably, and we'll try to make it clear when we're talking about one that's on disk and one that's been cached in RAM. When we talk about blocks on disk, it's important to have a notion of how close they are to each other. And so we'll define a notion of next. What's the next block uh, on disk after the one we have? So the next block concept, sequential blocks on the same track are considered to be very close. And you can think of the next block being the one that will rotate under the head after me. That's my next block. When we're done looking at all the blocks on a particular track, then the blocks on the same cylinder would be the next closest because we don't have to move the disk arm to switch from one disk head to another. So we're just going to a different platter, keeping the disk arm fixed. So that's blocks on the same cylinder, but a different platter. And then across cylinders, there's blocks on adjacent cylinders where we only have to move the disk head just a little bit to get from one track to the next. All right, we're going to arrange our file pages when we start to put together sequential files in order by next on the disk. And that's going to allow us to scan a file following the next block concept so that scanning the file will be as fast as possible, minimizing seek and rotational delays. Uh, moreover, when we do sequential scans, we're going to try to prefetch several blocks at a time. So as that track spins under the head, even though we may have only asked for one block so far, we'll transfer, say, a whole track worth of blocks or maybe even a whole cylinder work, worth. So we're going to read large consecutive chunks of blocks whenever we get a request. 
Remember the disk space management uh, module that we're going to talk about next is at the very bottom of the database architecture. It's the lowest layer of the database management system. It's in charge of managing the space on disk. Its purpose is threefold. It maps pages to locations on disk. So it keeps track that, you know, page number four is in a particular location on the disk drive physically. It's got an API to load pages from disk into memory. So please transfer page four from the disk drive into memory. And similarly, it's got an API to save pages from memory back down to disk. So we bring the page into memory, we maybe change some things on it, and then we want to save it back down to disk or write it to disk and ensure that it was written correctly. So that's the job of the disk space management system. And the higher levels, namely the buffer manager, will call on the disk space manager to read and write a page and to allocate and deallocate logical pages from the disk. So the disk space manager is going to get requests for pages and often get requests for sequences of pages. And it's the job of the disk space manager to try to make sure that a request for a sequence of pages goes fast, particularly that it's satisfied by pages that are stored physically sequentially on the disk. Now the fact is the physical details of storage are hidden from the higher layers of the system. The higher layers are just going to make a performance assumption. They will assume, safely, that the next page concept is fast. So when they ask for a sequential run of pages, page 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that the disk management system will actually have laid out those pages on the disk sequentially. Okay? And we'll try to do that. It may be imperfect, but it'll be pretty close. That's the goal of the disk space management system, is to manage that performance expectation of the higher levels by laying out the pages on disk intelligently. Now, how is disk space management implemented? There's a bunch of different options, and they've been all used over time. Uh, some are these days make more sense than others, so let's talk through this. One proposal for disk space management is to implement it at a very low level, kind of at an operating system style of level, where the database management software is directly talking to the storage device. So it's, it's talking the protocol that the storage device exports, bypassing any features of the operating system. This is great because it means the database management system is going direct to hardware. It goes as fast as possible. Nobody's in the way. All right, so that's great. So if you know your device well and you know how its device drivers work, you can make the database management system access data very quickly. The problem, of course, is that disk drives are not forever, and you might swap out one device for another. And now you've got software that worked for the old device. It has to be ported to work for the new device. And so way back when, database systems were optimized for particular disk drives. But these days, because disk drives come and go, that's very unusual. So this proposal typically isn't done anymore. A second proposal is to let the operating system worry about the device, take the operating system's file system interface, and uh, implement disk space management over the file system. This is quite common today. And the way it works is when you start up your database, you're going to allocate the debt is to say the database management system is going to allocate one large contiguous file on a nice empty disk. Uh, and it's going to just assume that if the pages of this file from the operating system, page 1, page 2, page 3, page 4, are physically contiguous on the disk. It's actually the operating system that's going to decide where on the disk that stuff's going to go. But today's file systems are pretty good at um, keeping sequentiality of file blocks if you start with an empty disk. So most file systems are optimized for the sequential access, and it gives us more or less what we want if we start with an empty disk. Now here's a detail, which is that file systems typically require a file to be on a single disk drive. Databases, on the other hand, will have a notion of a file, which is going to span multiple file system files on multiple disks or even multiple machines. So we're going to have a database management system abstraction of a file that's actually made up of many file system files, all right? because it could be quite a bit bigger than what a single drive holds. So if you want to think of it this way, using a local file system, over every disk there's a file system interface. And there's one big file on each file system that's got pages in it. And then above that, the disk space manager is giving you the illusion of a giant file that spans all of these file system files. And so when you say get page 4 to the disk space manager, the disk space management software passes that down to the appropriate big file number two, which happens to be on a particular file system volume, uh, and it returns it to the user. Uh, similarly, when you say get page five. So the higher layers of the database are abstracted from these details of the file system by the disk space management layer. So to summarize, the disk space management layer provides an API to read and write pages to a logical device. The pa a page is a block level organization of bytes on the disk. 
And we have a notion of next, which gives us locality and abstracts the details of whether we have a device or a file system or whatever underneath. Okay, we just have a notion of pages that are sequential. Summarizing then all of our discussion of disks and files, we talked about magnetic hard disks and solid state disks. We talked about the basic mechanics of hard disks in terms of seeks and rotation delays and transfer. We talked about solid state disks and the fact that they have write amplification, which means that writes are slower than reads and that random writes are slower than sequential writes on an SSD. We talked about the notion of near pages and how it relates to the cost of access. So in hard disk drives for both reads and writes, near pages are faster than far pages. On SSD, only for writes does this matter. Now, the relative costs of things, just random versus sequential disk access on a hard disk can be 10x, but the difference between disk and RAM can be enormous, like the difference between going to Pluto versus going from San Francisco to Sacramento, or in registers going to your head. So again, we're going to have to be very, very careful with our memory hierarchy to make these database systems go fast. We talked about database file storage, which typically these days is done over file system files. And the disk space manager loading and storing pages, thinking about blocks as their unit of transfer and abstracting away the device and the file system, but just providing a fast next.